use and or view at your own risk. In this video I will show you how I enable Google Chrome's strict site isolation option also known as the site per process option. This is an experimental feature in Google Chrome and may have some adverse effects in certain use case scenarios which I'll do my best to describe later in this video. I would do this on any type of computer hardware that has Google Chrome installed on it Mac, Windows, smartphones, all-in-ones. The reason for doing this is the recent disclosure of the exploits Meltdown and Spectre, which you have likely heard about if you're watching this video. This will only help protect information while using Google Chrome and only against Variant 1 of Spectre. Let me go ahead and demonstrate how to turn the feature and or option on, and then I'll explain more. Open Google Chrome on whatever device it's installed on. And in the address bar, if it's not clear, clear it. And then type in the word Chrome, a colon, two forward slashes, and the word flags. All together, no spaces, and hit the enter key. Once that page is opened, go to the custom and control Google Chrome button or the menu or the hamburger menu, whatever you refer to it as. Click that, then go down to find or find in page if you're on an Android device and click that. Once the search box opens up, type in the word isolation, I-S-O-L-A-T-I-O-N. You should now see all the options that contain the word isolation highlighted. Go to the one with the heading of Strict Site Isolation as you can see here. What we'll want to do is click the link highlighted in blue on my computer that says Enabled and that'll change it, that'll enable it and change it to Disabled. So we'll go ahead and click that. Then before you do anything else, you'll see a link that's kind of grayed out um, named Enable Site Per Process right click that and then select copy link address you can use this after chrome restarts to quickly double check the setting and make sure it's set as desired you will notice that google chrome has popped up an action button at the bottom of the page asking you to relaunch now in order for the changes to take effect go ahead and click that once the web browser has restarted just go back to the address bar click it make sure everything's highlighted right click it and then select paste and go this will take you back to that particular option and we're just want to check it and make sure it says disabled so that we know it has been enabled and that's it you're done strict site isolation has been enabled for Google Chrome on this computer as I said before, I would do this on all the devices that I have Chrome installed on. And I would also make sure that I did all my web browsing in Google Chrome until the fixes can be uh, rolled out. You can go ahead and close Google Chrome or go about your business and start surfing now. Doesn't matter, whatever you have to do. With that said, if you are on a computer that's running the Windows 10 Creators Update operating system, either 1703 or 1709, and it has been patched with the KB4056891 or the KB4056892 patches, to my understanding, you should be okay to browse with Microsoft Edge browser with a similar mitigation as per site isolation. With added mitigations, to the way the kernel of the operating system handles data, which should give you further protection from all variants of Spectre and Meltdown. These are mere mitigations, not fixes. The fixes will have to come, as I said before, from the hardware vendors. These mitigations also come with a performance price. Now as far as turning on site isolation in Chrome, it also has a couple of caveats. Um, certain developer features will be hindered or unavailable. 
um, some iframes may not print when printing a web page and there of course will be a browser performance hit with it too a small price to pay in my opinion to keep yourself protected there have also been reports of the patches released from Microsoft not installing properly and or having conflicts with certain third-party antivirus solutions I have updated Windows 10 creators update version 1703 running only Windows Defender antivirus with no issues and very little performance degradation. For more information on the patches from Microsoft and the operating system versions that have available patches, Matt Elliott from CNET and Madeline Dean from Windows Report have both written great articles which I'll link to in the description below. I will also provide a link for downloading the patches from Microsoft's update catalog website. What to do after all this? All you can really do is keep an eye on your computer manufacturer's website for BIOS or other firmware updates as these will likely be where the fixes come from. And thank you for watching.